All right. Uh, all right, it's 10 o'clock, so I think I might get started. Um, let's see. To get a little bit of an idea of everyone's background, would uh, everyone mind posting in the chat maybe uh, just a little bit about yourself? So like whether or not you're like a, a teacher or a developer of a SNAP extension or just a student or a person of interest. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello. Perfect. All right. So if you uh, missed my first announcement, I was just uh, wondering what people's background was. Um, so I'd asked uh, if everyone doesn't mind posting into the chat. Uh, their backgrounds, so whether or not that's a, a teacher, a student, a developer, or a SNAP extension developer, um, or just person of interest, I guess. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, I'm gonna get started. Uh, thank you for for, the, for those of you who have already posted in there. Thank you for uh, posting. Um, I'll keep an eye on those as they keep uh, filtering in. But this is helpful for me to get a, a sense of and uh, you know, what the audience consists of and um, things like that. So. Uh, so in today's workshop, we're going to be talking about building your own services or data services within NetSpot. So uh, before we get into the meat of the workshop, um, I wanted to first cover a couple slides uh, and, of course, a little bit of background for those of you who might not be familiar with NetSpot itself. So NetSpot is an extension of SNAP, which provides networking capabilities, among other things. But, uh, but in broad strokes, that's the thing that we're going to focus on today anyway. Uh, the primary networking concepts, um, if I had to limit it down to just two, I would probably say messages and remote procedure calls, although, of course, there are, um, there are others. Uh, in this workshop, we're going to be focusing mostly on remote procedure calls. Now, in NetSplox, remote procedure or related RPCs are grouped into services, and, and uh, any RPC can be called um, just like any other block. Uh, and we have a couple examples here. Um, where we're using a, a service called Cloud Variables. Um, and that one has a number of associated RPCs, um, including the ones shown below, where you can set variables, get variables, delete variables, and they have an optional password argument. So um, uh, in, in this case, they have an optional password argument. Uh, as you'll see when we get into working with uh, NetSplox um, after, the, after we get through these slides, uh, the Basically, the RPC field is dynamically um, or corresponds to the RPCs defined for the given service. And once you select your RPC, uh, the number of input slots in the block uh, will update according to the expected arguments for that RPC. So we can see in this example, like set variable has a name, a value, and a password, um, whereas get variable has just a name and a password. And I mentioned before that the password in this case is optional. All right, <clears throat> so a little bit more about NetSpox services. Uh, I mean, conceptually, if you're not familiar with this uh, concept of a RPC or remote procedure call, you can think of it a lot like a uh, custom block where the, but I, that actually runs on the server. In other words, you call it like a regular block, um, but the uh, code that runs when this block uh, is executed is actually running on the NetSpox server, as shown in this uh, kind of cloud icon here. So in other words, when we, if we run this block like uh, cloud variables, or the get, if we call the 
get variable RPC from the cloud variable service. That will actually make a um, that, that will actually result in code being run on the Netsbox server and the result being passed back to you. So the so RPC is this abstraction where you can again uh, execute a procedure uh, which uh, which exists remotely in this case in most cases in Netsbox it's on the Netsbox server itself. Um, and then, uh, and then you can get the result. Now, in Netsbox, a lot of these services uh, they serve a bunch of different purposes. Um, a few are like uh, providing access to existing data sets, such as like ice core data from NOAA and historical temperature data from Berkeley Earth. There are other examples um, that are found on like the Netsbox homepage, um, such as uh, where, where they do things like you provide access to existing. Uh, APIs uh, such as like Google Maps or the movie database or, or things like that. So they can serve up a few different roles, but uh, but one that they're um, pretty well suited for is is get providing access to like these existing data sets. And it's great because we have a bunch of them. We have um, hurricane data. We have, as we can see, like data from the eclipse in 2017. We have a number of other data sets related to like uh, paleoclimatology um, and historical temperature data and things like that. However, people often find uh, are asking about um, some new data set. So, um, and, and it makes sense. I mean, a lot of times you want to pick data sets that are relevant to your students and give them certainly a whole a, a lot of options. Uh, so, if you wanted a new data set previously, what you would do is you would write a new service in JavaScript, kind of shown in the lower left here. And then you would contribute it back to Netsbox, on, which is hosted on GitHub, and you'd wait for the next release. Now, we don't need to go through these details. The only downside is that there's, it takes a, um, uh, there, there's a little bit of overhead between first, of course, writing all the code in JavaScript rather than um, Netsbox and things like that, and then having to uh, jump through a few different hoops to get it involved or in, get it integrated into Netsbox. Now, this still is possible, and sometimes it's the right, a good choice, but um, since Netsbox itself is a box-based programming environment, why can't we use Netsbox to create a new service? So this brings us to uh, the focus of uh, this workshop, especially when we get into the hands-on portion here in a moment. Um, the, so uh, being that we already have a host of services that can run code on the server, um, we just uh, created a new service called Service Creation, which um, contains a bunch of RPCs related to creating our own service. Um, so in other words, we made a service that lets you create services. Uh, so we're, we uh, currently, they, we have this RPC called Create Service from Table. In other words, a table referring to tables in SNAP, where there are a list of lists. Um, and, uh, and then this will, if you just use the default values here, it'll create a new service for you where the RPCs are inferred based off of the data itself. Now, um, again, we're going to be going through a hands-on part in a moment, so it's not vital that uh, we go, you understand all the details of where these RPCs came from or thing, anything like that. But at a high level, basically all you really need to do is log in, import some data into Netsbox as a CSV, and then call this RPC called create service from table using your uh, imported data and whatever name that you would like uh, to have the service be called or what, um, and, the, and the name of the service that you're creating and then it'll show up and then you can call it just like you would call any other service. All right so uh, let's give this a try. Um, I, I'm going to post the link in the chat so, uh, so this is going to be the um, public project that I'm going to be walking through to, uh, like for the purposes of this workshop. I will say one other thing, and that's that we have, a, um, after we go through the initial kind of like hello world version, I think it would be cool if there were any data sets that people found interesting um, for people to explore uh, uploading their own, again, like not toy example or hello world version, but an actual data set. Um, we, I have a few listed here, and I will share the URL to these slides so people can um, 
uh, access all of the or all of the uh, the data sets listed here. But if we hop over to Netsbox now, now if you haven't used Netsbox before, it's netsbox.org. That's the website. And uh, and when it loads, you'll see a few examples, kind of like highlighted examples. Um, and if you go to the upper left and click the Try Now plus a kind of button here in the corner, then it'll pull up the Netsbox editor. Um, and uh, and and that's where we're going to be working today during most of the workshop. Are there any questions at this point? I feel like I kind of cruised through those slides pretty quickly, so I uh, I'm happy. Or so. Uh, but I was hoping to just set the stage and spend most of our time for the workshop in the actual environment itself. All right. In that case, um, in that case, if you click on the first URL that I had sent, the um, the editor.netsbox.org with the action present and all of that, you should see it should pull open a page like this. Um, so you should see the Netsbox editor um, with a few different sprites and a um, and a blank stage. Is everyone able to uh, see this page or this project? Feel free to use the either the thumbs up or just message something in the chat. Uh, Brian, if um, if the if when you load it, you just get a blank white screen, uh, it's because you're in full screen mode and want to. Oh um, yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah. So uh, one second, let me update that URL a little bit here. All right. So uh, like Corey just mentioned, if uh, um, so, if I was going to refresh this page. If it pulled up like this, and then you end up just with a white screen like that, it means we're in full screen mode. Um, if you click this little, these two arrows in the top right, it'll close. Otherwise, just use this second link, and then it should open in this uh, edit mode. And let, let me interrupt for a second. So if you already have a Snap username and password, that's not going to work here. So Netsblox uses a completely separate user database. So if you don't have an account, you should sign up for an account and, and uh, then you can save your work in this workshop. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. So uh, you sign up for an account in case you're, uh, you sign up for an account the same way that you would in uh, Nets or in Snap. So, uh, but again, it's a separate username and password like Otto said. Um, if we click on the cloud icon, there's a login option in the menu. Selecting login, or sorry, uh, and there's also sign up. So selecting sign up will let you create a username just like you would in Snap. Um, and then once you've created a username, it'll email you a password or like a, your your initial password, and then you can log in. Um, again, just following the same the same flow as Snap. And once you have it, you should be able to log in. All right. So Helen, have you been able to, uh, has it, is it loading now? Or are you still having problems with uh, loading? Cool. All right. So um, for any of you who may not be familiar with, the Netsbox, or wait, with Netsbox, I'm going to go through a quick um, example or just go to click a quick little walkthrough of the environment itself, and then we'll start jumping into creating your own service. So uh, it, it should look pretty familiar for uh, um, those of you coming from Snap. There we have a, the stage in the top right. This is right now just empty white screen. 
Um, we have sprites and a sprite corral underneath it. Clicking on any of these sprites, of course, shows the code for that specific sprite. Um, and, uh, and the center area, of course, is the scripting area. So this contains all the code and the logic for every uh, the currently selected sprite or stage. Um, one, some things that are unique to Netsblox is that if you uh, go to the left side here and you look at this kind of all the blocks in this uh, palette, kind of like your toolbox of avail available blocks to add to the project, um, we have a networking category as well. Uh, these contain the first top four are related to messaging or sending messages over the internet to other uh, like computers and things like that. Um, so you can play it, make like multiplayer games and such. Those aren't these uh, are something new in that box, but are not something that are not going to be the focus of this workshop. Then beneath those, we have three blocks related to these RPCs. So we have this call block, where instead of calling a function like the well, that like the block that you might have seen before in the control. We are calling an RPC, so a function that exists uh, remotely or on, our, on the server. Uh, we're going to be using these pretty extensively. Um, and, then, uh, and then we also have a run block, which similar to the run block under control, will execute code, but this one, of course, is executing an RPC and just not returning any value. All right. We can also just check this error box if we ever want to see if there was any error when we were uh, running the RPC. Um, all right. So um, are there any questions at this point? And was everyone able to get it to load? Or were there any issues loading? All right. In that case, let's, uh, um, let's start getting into the uh, creation of our own custom services. So uh, again, if there are any questions at any point, feel free to interrupt me, um, and, uh, and I'm happy to uh, you know answer them right then. And there. All right. So uh, so in this example, so I, I, we have three sprites. One is just an overview sprite. The other one's for basic usage, and the last one is for advanced usage. We're going to be going. The plan is to go through all three of them, um, and there there all this code exists in three different sprites. Just more organizationally, not because of any uh, um, requirement or behavior required of each sprite. So basically, in this, uh, in this example, we're going to be making a custom service. As I mentioned before, we have a service called service creation, which is used for creating these RPCs. If we wanted to uh, like see other RPCs that are defined for the service creation service, we can click the second drop down here. And we'll see that we also not, not only have or we can see the other uh, RPCs that are defined here. Um, so if I selected nothing, um, I could, uh, I, I don't know, so I could select empty if I wanted, or I could change the service, which would be select, uh, by selecting the first drop down. Um, if I select the first drop down and select, say, like Google Maps, now the RPC drop down has a completely different set of RPCs because these are the RPCs that are available in the Google Maps service. At any point, if I want, um, I can also get like help information and it'll tell me what each of the arguments are supposed to be and what the RPC does. Um, if, I, uh, if I don't select anything here, then I'll be able to see a description of the overall service. So this tells me that like Google Maps, so the Google Maps service provides access to the Google Maps API, et cetera. Um, and any links in here, of course, are clickable. I'm going through a little bit of these details just because as we make our own service, um, we, uh, it's nice to, especially if we're uploading our own data, to say where the data came from or things like that. So I wanted to make sure that it's, uh, that, um, or I want to make sure I took a moment to show where this help information showed and things like that. All right, so uh, I can switch this block, not that I have to, but I can switch this block back to the service creation service and the create service from table or get create from table options. All right, so before we proceed, um, again, it is important that you are, if you want to actually create your own service, you need to be logged in to do so. Um, so uh, we have this username block. If we click on username block, it should say something like uh, or your username. If you don't see text popping up there, then you're not currently logged in. 
and make sure that you log in and if you need to um, sign up first, of course. Um, are there any uh, questions or comments or is anyone having issues signing up? Some of these things are uh, certainly a little uh, easier to get feedback, of course, in person, but um, uh, hopefully you speak up if there are any. If you, hopefully people, people feel comfortable speaking up if there are any challenges. All right, in that case, I'm going to jump over to the basic usage uh, sprite. And, uh, and this is just a, a little walkthrough um, where we don't worry about too, like, uh, too much like advanced configuration of this service, but just um, kind of use it uh, with its out-of-the-box defaults and things like that. All right, so far I've uploaded um, a variable already in this project called example data. Example data is if you click this arrow by this comment, um, it has a link. It's basically a, a snippet or a really small subset of this uh, data set about international soccer or football, depending upon the region you're from, um, results from 1872 to 2017. And I just took uh, 10, 10, uh, uh, 10 games. So uh, the first thing that uh, we're going to do is if we run this first uh, script by just clicking on it here, we'll see the, we can look at the data itself. We can see that it has a few columns. It looks like a CSV, so it has a, ro a row of headers, and then it has like a column for the date, a column for the home team, the away team, home score, away score, and where the uh, match took place. Now, uh, the the uh, service creation or when we're creating data services, they can be pretty like uh, they uh, they can be pretty highly configurable because there can be all sorts of different help messages you might want or RPCs. So uh, the way that these are configured and uh, are configured is that we basically can use this other RPC, which gives us a set of options. So if we pass our data to this. Um, RPC get create from table options. Then we'll see basically the configuration, uh, the default configuration for this service. So if I click the checkbox by options, we will see uh, that we have a table here. And it says, uh, that, and, and it's basically a dictionary. So the first value is really the key, and the second. The first, first column contains keys, really, and the second column contains items corresponding to those keys. So that means that when I call it get create from table options, it gives me this table back that says the help, basically the help message for the service, just like we saw when I right-clicked on Google Maps and looked at the help message there, is going to be data set uploaded by Brian. Uh, since Netsbox knows what my or that I'm logged in as Brian, it just uh, generated that for me. Then it also contains another key called RPCs. And we'll be looking, and it has this little icon here. If you haven't seen that before, that means that this is a list or table or list of lists or things like that. So we'll be looking at that more in a moment. But uh, if I click the next block, I can, just like I showed in the watcher, the variable, I can see the help message. Um, I have, I'm using these helper blocks or custom blocks that will just help look, that will make it easier to look up like the value corresponding to the help key. So when I look up, I get the value corresponding to help in options. That gives me data set uploaded by Brian. I can confirm this by running the block. All right. Now, um, I can, of course, change this because I might want to say where this, uh, like why this service was created and where the data, set, data actually comes from. So I can actually use this, uh, this other custom block, set value of help in options to this text. And now, as you'd expect, um, as you'd expect, we have a the um, second value here. We now our help message are, is now a service created as part of the tutorial. The service was created by Brian and uses data from and so on and so forth. All right. So that was one of the simpler parts to configure. It's nice to say where your data comes from. Um, so I think it's important to touch on. But um, now the pretty, I think, more interesting part is uh, in the form of these RPCs. So 
since these are already nested in these uh, this options object, I'm just going to set um, RPCs to its own variable so we can kind of look at it. Um, and if we try to look at it, we'll see it looks like everything's a, a list, like so it's not real easy to see in this watcher. So let's continue using these blocks in this project to view it. So if I click the length of RPCs, it says 15. So it's RPCs corresponds to a list of 15 RPCs. Um, and these have a, a bunch of different uh, methods for interacting with the data, and it's determined from the uh, um, the data itself. If we remember back to this RPC block, which was or this uh, get create from table options. All right. So we uh, so there. Well, one thing we can do to start is just to print out the names of these RPCs. So I have this little script here to try to help with this. So basically, it um, because if we look at a single RPC, so RPCs again is this length of 15 items. But if we get the first RPC, we can see that it is this, uh, it's a table as well. That looks like this. So, uh, the, so this is the first RPC that was created. It says get date column. Which if we if we show our data again, while we look at this, it makes sense why you might want date, date col get date column to be an RPC, um, because if we look at our data, the first column is of course the date. So someone might want to get all the date values so they could look at the range from the first one to the last, and so on and so forth. Now we're going to talk more about these blocks of this code in the in here as well. But, um, but each RPC is represented with at least a name, a help, and then you also have some uh, code that it'll run as well. But again, we won't need to get into the code for this basic usage, but, um, but it is something that we'll cover more in the example case, or the advanced case. So, uh, so we can use this second script to just print out the names uh, of the RPCs that are defined. It says there are 15 RPCs defined in the options. These are the names of them. You know, get date column, get home team column, get home team by date, get away team column. It and so on. Um, so this basically just lets us know. So what we've been doing so far is we've just been looking at if we just uploaded this data, um, if we if we just uploaded this data and said create um, create a service from this table, but the table is of course referring to this data table. Um, what RPCs would we get? And it says that we would get to, and, uh, and we're looking at the options because the options have a lot of rich information about the help message and, and so on and so forth. So at this point, we have a, a later section here where we'll be customizing them, but we can just go ahead actually and try to create this service. So let's actually, we can just scroll. Oh, yeah, we can pull this out. Select service creation, create service from table. And now I'm just going to upload data as my data. And my name is going to be Brian's uh, soccer data, or soccer service. All right. So if I just run this, um, if I just call this RPC, the, uh, these are these, uh, or sorry, yeah, this RPC, this create service from table RPC, we will see these, we will expect it to create a service of these 15 RPCs. So if I run this, we'll see it says, okay. So it seems like everything worked successfully or was successful. And now if I go to the service and uh, I click on the services dropdown, I'm going to community and Brian, we can see Brian's soccer service. And now we can see, in fact, the same RPCs that are printed here on the screen. Um, you might notice that they're printed backwards, so I probably should have done it the other way. But anyway, so I get date column, get home team column, get home team by date, and things like that. And another way that we can demonstrate this is that actually if you look on your own computer, um, or I just look at someone else's here. So if I look at community, I'll see that Christopher Andrews, who I think is in this chat somewhere. Yep, here we go. Um, see us back with the new snap. Um, now he, we can see that he has also created his own service already while well, he's been uh, like in the, during this workshop and I can click on his service called soccer data. If I right click and say the help message, it'll say 
data set uploaded by Christopher Andrews, which was the default one that was generated. And now I can do things like get his data. All right. So does that make sense to everybody so far? There might be one question. So if I go to Brian and I say Brian soccer service, and I right click and review the help message, it says data set uploaded by Brian. But didn't we change our options to say a service created as part of the tutorial, the service was created by you know, my username and so forth? Does anyone have any idea why? Uh, Philip, yes, uh, sorry. Uh, Philip asked, is the created service immediately available to other Netsbox users? And yes, it is. So if, uh, so if I go back to community, you can see that this is a pretty new feature, so we don't have a lot of them created yet. But, um, but if uh, other people run this create service from table, we'll see the um, we'll, we'll see their uh, projects showing up here, or their services showing up here as well. All right. So the question that I was about to ask was, uh, if I look at the help message for Brian's soccer service that I just created, um, it, it says data set uploaded by Brian. But if we look at what we just did, we looked at the help message in options, and, and we set it to this value, a service created as part of the tutorial. Um, does anyone have any ideas why we don't see that here? Why we see the original one? If it helps zero on this guy. So, um, all right, so, uh, so the reason is actually, um, I mentioned, if you notice when we created this service, all we passed was the name, Brian's soccer service, and this data variable. Now, the thing is though that I didn't pass any customization or custom options. So it's just gonna be using the defaults because it doesn't know that we changed value because we we changed our value of the help message in our options to this but we didn't use that options object or we didn't pass those options when we created the service so actually if i change this and i add our options uh, variable here and pass that when we create the service now um you should one moment i'm going to first delete that service something um, all right so one moment here I oh my I just tested this one before all right so I'm running into something odd I'm trying to see what it is Um, options should be there for the value. Um, I'm not sure if it's all of them. Let's see, options should be there. Yeah, I, I think, I think you drop in that, that reporter block in place of your options in the call service creation block down there, right there. Take that one out and put in the value help. Oh, okay. so, uh, the so whole this... value. I mean, so I can pass this, but it's expecting a, a list. 
Um, I, uh, I am just surprised to see this little error. Why, oh, why? One moment, I'm gonna run this one quick. This is what I focused on before. Um, let's see here. Create service. Why, oh, why? Okay, so, uh, all right, so, uh, Let's, um, hmm. so I'm surprised that I'm seeing a little error there, but uh, let's focus on the, uh, I guess we can still look at the, uh, stick and stand the basic usage of it. Um, so if we, uh, if we look at the service that was new, the newly created service, oh. uh, like Brian, or sorry, this is Brian's first service. Let's do Brian's soccer service. So I create uh, Brian's soccer service. Now we can see these uh, generated um, RPCs to start with. So we have things like get country by date. Um, uh, we have some generated help messages already. Um, if I do things like get country by, or if I run something like this, we'll now see uh, that we have the date and the country, so corresponding to the um, match on that date. So let's, um, let's try seeing if we can move on to a more interesting data set. So like, um, so for example, I, let's see. so for example, there's a, sorry. So uh, one thing I could use is the, Like we could look at um, a few other data sets that might be of interest. So like there's like the Berkeley temperature data since 1849 um, from Berkeley Earth. There's a bunch of, a few other things like health system data or SARS data or um, US greenhouse gas emissions data. So if I click on one of these links, we can see the data set that of course that corresponds to it. Now I um, downloaded this data set or this file earlier and just remove these, uh, the comments at the top and convert it and uh, just make sure that these were space separated since the rest of this file is space separated. So I'm gonna see if I can use this um, Berkeley Earth data or historical data in uh, Berkeley, California to see if I can make my own custom service um, that makes this data set available to, like, for example, students in my class or really all other Netsbox users, but of course, um, generally you have some group in mind. So, uh, so in that case, I'm going to first import the, uh, the text file itself. So it's, I didn't rename it, and the name is, you know, like this 37 dot whatever trend. When I Im select import from the file dropdown and select that file, we'll notice that it makes a new variable here based off of the file name. This one's not really meaningful. It looks like it takes everything before the dot, so 37. All right. And, uh, and in, for this example, I'm gonna import tools just so I can do a little bit of pre-processing. Now, if you're using a, um, a CSV, it should automatically parse it and recognize that it's a, uh, a table. But in this, for this ex uh, example, it actually just has a bunch of kind of spaces. So it's really just kind of white space separated. Um, so uh, when I, uh, so I can do something like make a variable called um, clean data. And I'm going to first look at every line. So I'll split this variable by a line. And now we can see that uh, we have a whole lot of lines that still need to be parsed. So I can, uh, hope you guys don't mind me using this map block. So this will basically let me call a function for each line. However, before I do that, it looks like line two here is blank. So let me say, delete 
item two. So we can say that our clean data is now going to be split, this split by lines. But now let's remove the second line. All right. But now we still have these lines that need to be split into columns. So there we can use the split operator by white space. All right, and now uh, now we can see that we actually have a table um, of the data. So I can set our clean the data to now this actually clean data. So now it looks like our data is in the form of this table, which is great. So now that we have some uh, data that we've cleaned, which corresponds to, again, this historical um, temperature data for Berkeley, California, going back to 1849. Oh, looks like we have an extra line here at the end. So let's delete the last line, which looks like the blank line that's still showing up in our table. There we go. Now the data is looking pretty good. But now we might want to do something about these NANs, but uh, for now, I'm just going to leave them in. So, so we've got our clean data, and now we want to make our own service for it. So let's uh, grab this service creation service. Say create service from table. Um, and say, um, Historical Berkeley temp. So I can make a service like this and then pass the clean data in. And now, just to verify, if we go to community, we don't see any under here. But if we run this uh, service, now when we go under community and we check out the services that I've created. Now we have Berkeley temperature data, and we can do things like uh, get all year values, or more interestingly, maybe, um, let's see. Yeah. So we could uh, get all year values, get table, get monthly anomaly, get the month. Um, so anyway, so we could do things like get the 20-year uh, anomaly for any given year, or things like that. Um, one second, one person's having an issue with the NetSwox page loading. Are there any questions at this moment, or this page? Okay, so uh, are there any questions or comments at this point?
Ryan, one thing um, you might mention the special nature of the first column. Um, sure. So, um, so one thing that you'll uh, notice is that sometimes um, that the options for this one look a little bit differently from the previous ones. So uh, when it tries to infer the options that you would like, um, it, uh, it does look at the first column as uh, potentially like an, it tries to check to see if that's like an index or like a unique ID. Oftentimes you'll have the, the first column might be uh, a unique identifier for the row. Uh, we could see that in the soccer example. So if we look at the soccer data from the one that Corey made, we can see that the date, the date here, like there weren't any, uh, at least in this uh, sample that we have so far, the date seems to serve as a unique identifier. And on this day, Scotland played England. On a different day, England played Scotland. Um, so, uh, so if it detects that it's a uh, a unique, if it thinks that if your first column shows up as unique, so only showing up once, which isn't the case in this last example that I pulled up, um, then you'll get a different set of options. Uh, in other words, it'll give you extra columns for getting the country by date or by the unique identifier things like that. Um, so uh, I, we could certainly change this data um, and combine, you know, all like a uh, year and month to be like you know, year dash month or month dash year. And then, uh, and then they would show up as unique and um, let's see, I, mean, I can do that quick and you'd see slightly different uh, options that are inferred. Now, uh, we were running into, I was running into some, so to jump back to that example, so I, so I just was uh, trying to hop out of the uh, first project that we were working with to show how you could use this with uh, like an actual data set that you might find interesting. Um, and most of the time, these default values uh, work, work fine. Um, so uh, we could we could certainly check out some of these other ones, like the you know greenhouse gas emissions in a CSV. We'd notice that if I downloaded, oh darn it. Um, anyways, we'd notice that uh, if you upload a CSV directly, that it would I wouldn't have to do this extra parsing and cleaning step that I had to do in this, with this code. But um, I might hop back to the uh, first example or the tutorial itself to show. Um, uh, some uh, some more like some further examples of the the basic usage and then talk about the advanced usage. Even though I was seeing a, an odd error there that I didn't see when testing it, but but this is a, this is a pretty new feature in NetSplots. Um, but we've still used it a, a decent bit, usually just with the default options. But anyway, so um, so if we hop back to the example we were using before, where we can create an options object, we can set the help message, we can look at a list of the RPCs and print them on the screen. Um, and then uh, we, I also have this section down here about customizing these RPCs. So uh, we noticed before that there were 15 of them, but we could certainly, but uh, basically the idea is that this options object that we got at the beginning, um, again, we were running into an odd little error when I was trying to, uh, when I was trying to pass this options object to the RPC, but um, I'll have to check that out. But, um, but basically this should be uh, something that should be, the, the idea is that you get this options object and you make changes to it. And then when you um, upload it or when you pass it, to the uh, when you when you create the service itself, that these options will then um, configure the service. So in other words, if we pull it down and we see, if we look and we see these that there are 15 RPCs, if we delete a few of them, and now I run it, now there are only 12, and then passing uh, this uh, these options or this configuration basically um, to this create service from table RPC would result in only these 12 RPCs being created. But this goes a little bit further, um, just because you can, uh, um, because it does, these, these 
this options object isn't just like uh, names and help messages and just limiting to removing RPCs. Um, these, uh, since SNAP supports um, like a lot of functional programming concepts, including like these anonymous functions, or being able to pass around these kind of gray rings um, with uh, of like, again, an executable function. We, uh, these, these, this options object or each RPC in this options object actually contains a function that you can actually call. Um, so you could actually run this on your own computer to try it out. So if we wanted to um, test out this RPC, get date column, we could just run this script and see what the results would be because we're, we're running the, the blocks that the server sent us as part of the options. Um, so, uh, so this is a nice way that we can kind of test it out. Um, if we want to just see what the, what the answers would be or what the results would be before we, uh, publish this service. Um, and then again, we should, I ran into a little issue in passing options and I suspect I'll see it again, but, um, but I'll get that straightened away pretty quick, hopefully. Um, but then we'd be able to customize it and create one that only contains the 12 RPCs that are currently in our options. Does that make sense to everybody? Well, I might continue and just talk a little bit about the advanced usage, but, um, <clears throat> and then kind of, actually, I mean, uh, so one thing I could do is I could certainly talk a little bit more about the advanced usage, or um, we could actually get, uh, practice some more getting some other data, or practice getting other data sets that we might find interesting and in uploading them ourselves. Um, do people have any preferences or, I guess, votes? In that case, I might um, continue on and talk a little bit more about some of these advanced features or advanced options. Um, and uh, <clears throat> um, I just to speak for a moment on them and then try to jump over and uh, upload another data set um, or see if we can find another data set of interest to upload. So uh, <clears throat> basically, the I idea here is when you've got these RPCs uh, that have these configuration options, you know, like, or these, uh, like this kind of specification or configuration, like parameters, like the name that you want it, to, the name of the RPC, the help message for it. Um, you can also specify the functionality in one of two ways. So you can either treat it like uh, you're querying the data. So in other words, having a function that selects what, uh, what row is of interest. So given um, like a, a piece of data in the data set or a row in the data set, um, return whether or not we want to return, or like whether or not it's of interest um, or we want it to be included in our result. And then after querying the data, we can transform the um, results of the query really using this uh, another function. Um, again, this is optional. If we, uh, if we don't provide one, it'll just provide the, return the whole row. So um, if we look at the, the code for this get date column RPC, and then it optionally it'll have a combine uh, function as well, where the combine function, you might want to do something like, like shown in this script, where we get the sum of a column, then you would want a custom um, combine function, where instead of just returning a list of, uh, of everything, you would actually want to add them up. But anyway, so if we look, circling back to this RPC, 
uh, this RPC, if we just read the um, the table that represents it, that again was returned to us from this uh, options object in the server. The name is uh, get date column. It gets all the date value, get the date values that have the uh, data available. Now the query is basically just giving me every row. So for every piece of data in this data set, just return true. So we just grab everything. And then it has the, this transform is basically for each row that we selected from the data set. Again, we can look at the data um, here if we like. So query will go through and grab all the rows, two through 10. Um, of course, it skips the headers. Um, and then, uh, then for each row, it'll call this transform function. So, it'll, for, so this transform function, for example, will grab the first item in each row, which is the date. Um, we could also look at another We could also look at another RPC. And see if I can get home team by date. So this one is a little more interesting. So uh, it, it'll grab all the columns again, but then it uh, for each row, it'll grab, it'll return a list with the first item and then the second item. So that would be the date and then the home team for each, each list. All right. <clears throat> now, these, uh, these aren't read only. I showed before that we can run these blocks that we received from the server, but, um, but we can also, uh, of course, um, create, use the ad creator on RPC. So we can define our own functions for this and create our own RPCs to add to it. So we don't have to just use the ones that have been uh, defined by the server or generated for us automatically. All right. Um, so at this point, uh, I think uh, we don't have much time left. Uh, are there any questions? Um, I saw before that um, there was another service or two, but then it was later deleted. Um, does anyone else want to try creating a service? Because it looked like a couple, like one or two popped up, but not too many. Let's check this one out. Students, performance, and exams. Brian, do you have a um, recommendation about the path the best path to uh, would you recommend that people download things onto their computer put them in excel and save them as a csv or you've shown going directly from like the um, uh, from something that you found on the web without without doing it in doing cleaning in nets blocks yeah so um so ideally what you'd be importing would be a csv itself um, so I created a student performance one was a CSV and this one's already parsed then. So I don't have to worry about cleaning it. Or I mean, like, I don't have, or uh, actually this one's pretty clean too, but I don't have to worry about like parsing it myself. Um, the other one was a little bit of a, an exceptional case just because, um, uh, it was a little bit of an exception just because it, uh, it, it wasn't, it was like space separated. I mean, it looked like they were tabbed, but the tabs were spaces. <laughs> So like it was particularly unique in that regard. Um, now uh, I would generally, I mean, like I, I think that whatever you're most comfortable with would probably be um, good. The nice thing about doing it in NetsBlocks is that then you could just have a project that you use for updating this service, and then you could just mm -hmm. reopen it, re-upload. If you need to tweak anything, you could just do it there, as opposed to having to um, have two files to keep track of. Like what Excel document did I have? And do I need to re-update that Excel document? Because the challenging part about Excel or the nice thing about NetsBlocks uh, is that if, or just box based programming, I guess, um, it's not really unique to NetsBlocks here, is when I had that script, 
if you notice, when I noticed that uh, I had an extra line, I just reran those blocks and I started with the initial data, processed all of it, and then just got a new updated version. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so if I had a data set that I was cleaning and I found a mistake with it, it would be nice to have all the code. Um, I think uh, so I could just replace the input one or the input file and then just re-clean it. Um, but yeah, so they, this is another one that I could just uh, create quick and then I'll, I mean, we're, we're, we're at the end. So uh, if there, um, so if anyone has any other questions, I'd really uh, be happy to answer them. It's, uh, it's always hard to get feedback uh, over Zoom and stuff. So I know sometimes those things are a little less than ideal, but, but I'm still hoping that this is something that's uh, of use to people and people find it interesting and want to learn more. Or, or really, I just hope it can be helpful for people in their classrooms because it can be really hard to try to uh, get meaning or it's you kind of get this interesting trend where a lot of meaningful data to kids is well very diverse, but also can be very regional. So it's great when people can, uh, when t teachers are able to upload it themselves, so we can st support even more student interest. Awesome. Great to hear, Phil. I'm going to, I'll check this out. All right, here we go. Yeah. So now I, we can see that a few more services have been popping up under community. So I can do things like select one of these services and just get the whole data of all the table, or I can use some of the RPCs to do things like get the math score for the um, male participants. And I could do the same thing for female. Um, and then we could do things like start comparing or I don't know, or get writing score or compare, basically just look at how these different values um, differ across this case, it looks at the first column. So if you wanted to flip this around, you could tweak the data or hopefully provide your own RPCs. Awesome. Well, with that, uh, I don't want to keep you guys too long because I know the next talk is coming up in uh, a few minutes. Um, but I, uh, but again, I hope everyone enjoyed it. And if there are any questions, feel free to um, reach out to anybody on the Netsbox team. Um, there are some of our contact, contact information at the bottom of netsbox.org. Should be like an email somewhere. Or you can just reach out to me uh, uh, directly, or directly, or things like that. I'll post my email here just in case anyone has any questions. And cool. Hopefully, people enjoyed it, and uh, have a good rest of SnapCon.